hey guys hello everyone and welcome to the channel so this is 2024 and government of india according to national education policy has made certain changes on how you can do phd in india okay and how you can enter into phd in india so here i'm going to talk about five ways in which you can get into phds and you can complete your phd in india now i'm not covering private universities and state universities in this video i'm just focusing upon central universities uh, institutes like IITs, ISRs, and IITs, IISC, and uh, like uh, all the labs like CSIR lab, ICMR lab. So I'm talking about these institutes. Okay, so let's start with it. The first way how you can enter is very generic. It's the it's what it has been always. Like you qualify a certain exam, you become a JRF, or you you pass on a certain uh, cutoff, and you get that JRF certificate, and through that you can do PhD. In that case, you are eligible to get a JRF amount, which is 37,000 per month for the first two years and 42,000 per month for the next three years for your PhD. And this is the way how PhD, like how a uh, usual way of getting into PhD through a fellowship is in India. Okay. And it is still there. You can get into PhD. And with this particular exam, like if you have qualified CSIR, JRF, you become eligible to apply in all the institutes, all the universities. Through this, you just have to go through an interview and after clearing that interview, you can get into PhD and you can like start uh, like you can join a lab and start your PhD career. So that's the first way. The benefit of this is you will be getting a decent amount of fellowship throughout your PhD. And also if you have qualified JRF, it becomes easier for you for your further life. I mean, if you are thinking of joining as assistant professor or you're, if you're thinking of uh, having your career in academics in India, then it's good to qualify JRF. Okay. Now JRF, as I said, only, it's not only CSIR JRF. There are other JRFs also like D, uh, like uh, there is DBT JRF, there is ICMR JRF. Those are for other subjects like for life sciences. But for subjects like chemical sciences, physical sciences, we have CSIR JRF. Okay. CSIR UGC JRF. That's what we have. Fine. So and also for non-science subjects like for example, like the subjects which are not from the science background, for them we have UGC JRF. Okay. So that is the first way of getting into PhD. The second way or the second method which is introduced new like which is newly improvised according to the national education policy and recent notice from UGC and this method is applicable to do PhD in UGC approved institutes and in CSIR labs. Okay. So this is the method how you can get into PhD in these places. So for this if you have qualified so now what they have done is they have they are they have planning to uh, like conduct CSIR UGC net exam which they used to conduct but earlier they used to just have two category results one were those who were JRF and the other one who were net or LS qualified so net LS qualified earlier they were not eligible to join as PhD directly they have to either go through entrance exams or something like that to get into PhD in India but now they have made certain changes now what they have improvised is that now the result of CSIR JRF or UG, CSIR UGC net exam is going to be in three categories. Category one is going to be about JRF which was already earlier. The second one will be those who are net LS qualified but along with that they, will, they are also eligible to apply as PhD candidate. Now this second category students they can apply in all the universities all over India and uh, all the central universities and they can also apply in CSIR labs but for that uh, they have to go, go through an interview and their entrance exam marks will be 70% given weightage and their interview performance will be 30% of the weightage and combinedly will be the merit will be launched or merit will be made and based upon that we'll get an admission okay so this is the second category but the benefit of this is that if you qualify net LS and you fall in the second category, you are also eligible to apply as assistant professor later on. Uh, if you once you complete your PhD and want to become assistant professor, you don't have to qualify any additional exam. You you like you clarify the eligibility to become that. Okay, so that's the second category, which or the second way in which you can go into PhD. The third way, which is newly introduced according to the new norms is that uh, the third category of the result as I was talking about first category was JRF second was those who are net LS plus a uh, PhD admission and the third one are only who can apply for PhD admission these will not be given any JRF amount they will not be considered as assistant professor they will not be eligible for assistant professor but these third category student can only apply for PhD or they can only get into PhD through this 
Now, there is no explanation or there is no information about uh, the amount of funding or the amount of fellowship which they will get, which I, I hope that they will get, but they have not mentioned anything about that, okay. But these are, this is another way or this is the third way in which you can get into PhD by clearing the CSR net exam. So, one exam makes you eligible to get into PhD in three ways. The first way is with a certificate of JRF and with a fellowship amount, okay. That's the first category. Uh, the second category is the one not fellowship, like you will not be getting a fellowship according uh, along with the JRF, but here you will be getting a certificate which will be net qualified or LS qualified and you will be eligible to become assistant professor in future. And the third category or the third way the, which they make you eligible is that you just can go into PhD and complete your PhD, okay. So, these are the three ways which has been improvised according to the new norms okay and these these are the three major ways which has been introduced now the fourth way is to get into phd through gate score now this is something which many students don't know about okay but i want to make this thing very clear to everyone and like i just hope that this video reaches to most of the students so that they get to know that you can do phd with your gate score also so if you have qualified gate exam if you have uh, qualified gate exam even if your rank is not that good if your rank is not let's say in three digits or two digits in that case also you can apply for a phd okay if, even if your rank is in four digits that like, means in third, uh, several thousands means one thousand two thousand if your rank is under that then also you can apply for phd for this you have to apply uh, for into iits okay so this gate through gate you only become eligible to apply in phd in iits ISERs, NITs and IASC. You do not become eligible to apply for PhD in universities. So, GATE does not make you eligible to apply in universities whereas CSIR, JRF makes you eligible to apply in all the, all the places, okay. Be it universities, be it CSR lab, be it IITs, everywhere you can apply with that. But with GATE, you can only apply in IITs, ISERs, NITs and IASC, okay. So, with the GATE score, what you have to do now is you have to look for the website of these uh, IITs and ISERs and NITs and wherever you want to take admission you have to look for their notification for the admission and then you have to fill the form you have to uh, you know apply there uh, according to the process whatever they have certain IITs might take a uh, entrance exam or they can take directly interview of yours and once you clear that you can get into PhD over there. Now apart from IITs, ISERs and uh, NITs and ISC there are certain more institutes which are like uh, which are funded, uh, which you can say special institutes like CENS is there, Center for uh, Nanosciences and uh, then you have institutes like JNCSR. So, all these institutes also take admission based upon GATE exams. So, you have to explore them. I will give you a link of my video where I have discussed about these institutes in detail. So, you can watch that video in the i button. All right. So, this was the fourth way of getting into PhD according to the updated norms. Okay. The fifth way is an indirect way it's not the direct way to get into phd it is like you join somewhere as a project research associate which you can do after masters you have to keep an eye on the labs you have to keep searching for it if there are certain labs which want people as uh, like uh, project research associates or project associates or project assistant okay based upon different uh, like uh, fellowship amount the name of the post changes but yeah if you get into these places you can uh, like for the initial time you will be working as just as a project associate or project uh, assistant over there you will be just working upon a particular project you will be getting a certain amount of funding or certain amount of fellowship for that you will not be enrolled in the course but if your uh, like supervisor under whom you are doing that project if he or she agrees into that and if your uh, relationship with that person is good enough and he, if that person is also willing to that they can convert this into PhD, okay? And this happens throughout India in all the places, either IITs, ISERs, universities, everywhere it happens. It solely depends upon your, uh, like, uh, how your, uh, like, bonding is with your PI, okay? Or with your principal investigator or your supervisor. So, how does he feels about you? How, uh, how much he wants you in the lab? Depending upon that, he can do that, okay? So, yeah, this is one of the rare way in which you can convert 
your project into PhD and once you get converted into PhD you can complete your PhD. Now the thing is that many people think that okay let's say if I do one year of project and then I have to again do PhD so it will be like again five years so total it will be six years. No it doesn't work like that. If you join as a project let's say and your project was one year and you convert it into PhD then the previous one year which you have worked you can show that as the uh, although your joining date will be the date in which you have converted into PhD but still the work which you have done that will accelerate your work for your PhD and it won't take that much long to finish your PhD it can be finished earlier okay so these were the five ways or you can say five updated ways of getting into PhD in India according to the new norms I have made a detailed video upon the new norm on my all about chemistry channel so you can watch that video also if you want these information in detail so that's all from my side for this particular video I hope you guys liked it and I hope you guys got to know a few new things do let me know in the comment section if you have any queries any question or if you have any requests regarding certain videos so i'll try to make them out as well and see you guys in the next one till then have a great day bye bye take care